Hey guys, something a little bit different today, a little bit of behind the scenes. Somebody just DM'd through an article and said that they sh I should read this because apparently it discusses the YouTube channel specifically. Um, so I thought, hey, why the hell not? I'm going to read through this article and hey, I might keep you guys beside me as I do so. So I'm going to record, I guess, a bit of an on-the-fly uh, real-time reaction video to me reading this article. I'll probably cut out bits and pieces. Uh, it's probably going to be long. Um, the scroll bar suggests it's gigantic. So, But I'll have a read through and I'll cut a few bits and pieces in. Let's get into it. All right, so here we are on Seeking Alfalfa, this article by Sean, S Sean Chandler. Tesla fans are convincing the world to buy the stock. Summary. Elon Musk has created a fan base that will challenge and humiliate any Tesla bear with videos getting hundreds of thousands of views. Hmm, I wonder who he's talking about there. After the Cybertruck was announced, a business-oriented video about the truck went viral and consequently built a strong following for hyper-bullish Tesla content. This sparked a rise in content creation around Tesla stock, which has been fueled by YouTube's algorithm. This content is not fact-checked, reviewed or regulated, and some creators are paid handsomely, estimated well over six figures for their content. Uh, just to interlude here. Um, I can confirm that my YouTube ad revenue for the first 12 months uh, it will be over $100,000 in US. So that is surprising, especially given I didn't expect the channel would actually be eligible for monetization. You guys have seen my references to smoking weed and swearing. I thought that would make me ineligible, but hey, they're the facts. I'll do a 12 month income reveal too. Anyway, let's continue on the article. There's a bit of a reference to social dilemma, or talking about algorithms, recommending content, blah, blah, blah. Let's just continue on a little bit. I believe. Tesla fans and investors have leveraged social media platforms to convince large numbers to believe Tesla will become the most valuable company in the world. Maybe they will be right. This is an interesting comment. Um, there may be a grain of truth in that. <laughs> I'm not implying that these investors slash creators are intentionally gaming the algorithm to pump the stock or get a good ROI. Instead, they genuinely believe Tesla is going to be worth trillions. I certainly do, FYI. And the people drawn into these rabbit holes become just as convinced by the strong, often rarely refuted arguments. I mean, the algorithm wouldn't waste its time recommending more hyperbullish content to critics such as Jim Chanos or Montana Skeptic, right? That's a good point. Um, there's another reason, too, that I feature a lot of the bear content to discuss. Um, but absolutely, they're right. The algorithm can silo people. Such content around Tesla has gained tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of views across multiple social media platforms. Add to that the ease of smartphone trading apps, those pay creators for referrals, and stimulus checks being used on stocks, and it's no wonder Tesla replaced Apple as a top stock among millennials. One YouTuber even shared his story of buying Tesla stock using millions in margin. Just jumping in here too, that was me, Kevin, I watched that video. Many creators argue that this is a 10 plus year stock story. Jumping in again, I absolutely agree. This person is representing at least the stuff that I kind of have conveyed so far um, very accurately. And I think most of the Tesla channels out there, it's the same thing. We all have a very long term investment horizon. So you know, good. I'm, I'm impressed with this article so far. Um, quality stuff on Seeking Alfalfa, but we'll see how it continues. Many creators argue that this is a 10 plus year stock story and that they have no plan to sell anytime soon. With arguments like that being viewed millions of times, I can only imagine the impact that they've had has been huge. Hmm. Let me know in the comments guys if you think the impact from YouTube is not just myself but everybody has had a significant impact on Tesla's stock price um, and sentiment around the stock. Just share your thoughts, like what do you, what do you think? Yeah, and maybe your reasoning as well. The real kicker though is that many of these creators are getting paid. No, not by Elon Musk or Tesla. They sell ads. This includes YouTube creators and fan-based publications such as Tesmanian and Teslarati that often receive retweets by Elon Musk. With recognition from Elon Musk and support from a strong fan base, there's an incentive to create positive content about Tesla. Unfortunately, these claims reach millions without being fact-checked or regulated. Also true. Just a few years ago, when Tesla was worth about as much as General Motors, short sellers were accused of dragging down the stock. Short interest was high and Elon Musk attacked short sellers directly. He had direct conversations with them on Twitter, said that short selling should be illegal, and after a meteoric rise in the stock, a physical pair of short shorts became available for sale on the Tesla merchandise store. <laughs> Next level trolling from Tesla, I love it. Yet today, the opposite is true, as Tesla bulls and super fans are carrying the stock. Across all of social media, Elon Musk has leveraged social media and his following to create the perfect image of him and his company. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I may debate that point there. Uh, a lot of people actually have a pretty negative view of Tesla as a result of not uh, liking or understanding Elon's behavior, especially his tweets. But uh, yeah, I, I see the point he's making there, though. Um, Electric even reported that Tesla's PR department for the most part has been dissolved. So whether you choose to invest in the stock or bet against it, that's what you're up against. Here's how it all got started. Huh. 
Interesting. I see a thumbnail that looks familiar. The YouTube algorithm shapes content creation. Although the algorithms are designed to provide a better user experience, creators are financially dependent on adapting to it. If they don't adapt, they risk falling into obsolescence. In some cases, creators can completely crack the algorithm on a technical level, but in most cases though, creators simply follow the algorithm as closely as possible. So whatever it's the topic, video, length, title, thumbnail, or even a call to action, like and subscribe, creators closely monitor what works and make the content around their best guess at working the algorithm. Oh, I just have to take a pause here. You literally, unless I'm so high I forgot doing it maybe once ever, I have never asked people to like a video. I've like asked once to share a video and that was to get the attention of the media with that Nicola saga and we got their attention, well done. Financial Times wrote it up, etc. I've never asked people to subscribe to the channel, like a video, ever, verbally, ever ever period because the whole thing just makes me like eh. it helps it, it genuinely does because people sometimes they haven't subscribed and like oh fuck yeah or put on notification all that shit. i just i can't do it so this is an interesting point actually too because um i know far more about how the algorithm works than i actually implement because there's some stuff that i just don't want to go there it just doesn't feel right to me so let's continue creating the tesla rabbit hole Last year, someone released a video about the Cybertruck that likely showed up on anyone's homepage that had any interest in Tesla and its stock. It had all the traits to be considered a banger. The creator was charismatic, confident, and had an engaging script on a hot topic. At 10, at 10 minutes, it was an ideal length for a YouTube video, and the title and thumbnail were eye-catching. In a few weeks, it passed a million views, and here's a powerful message from the video. Ooh, my quote. From a Tesla investor's point of view, this is great news. For existing automakers, the message is clear. Copy Cybertruck or go bankrupt. I did say that. Tesla has always been a popular company and there are videos featuring the cars with greater popularity. But from a business perspective, this is the first time I've seen a video go viral. This sparked a whole new category for aspiring creators to take part of. Uh, hmm. Let me know in the comments, what do you guys think of that, about that statement? Do you think that this channel, that one video, created this whole, well, now there's lots of Tesla channels. Um, I mean, certainly there's definitely been a vast number of new Tesla-related content popping up in the last 10 months or so. Uh, could be a coincidence. Let me know. Following the algorithm. Unless creators find a way for the algorithm to follow their content, i.e. a viral video, they will typically find a way to follow the algorithm because that's where the money is. Previously, Stephen Mark Ryan created relationship advice content on YouTube under his own name, which has over 100 videos, but less combined views than his single Cybertruck video. That's true. Not surprisingly, he hasn't made another relationship video since. Yeah, if some of you guys will know this, some of you won't, but actually, I kind of like, long story, but I did some ayahuasca ceremonies in the jungle of Peru and realized that to reach my goal of impacting a billion people in a positive way over my lifetime, um, starting YouTube content would be a great starting place and had a couple of topics that came to me during these ceremonies. And the first one of those was just get some sort of content out regarding relationships. I'd had a lot of experience uh, seducing women, been traveling out through South America, backpacking for quite some time. And so I wanted to put all that stuff out there and just get it done. When I finished, then I moved on to Tesla content. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, the intent was never to return to that channel anyway. And I moved on to the Tesla content and yeah, things kind of went the way that they went. I was all in the Tesla content and still am. And that's the long-term plan. I do have one third uh, set of content that I want to cover as well. So relationships was first, get that out of the way. That stuff's timeless. You don't, it doesn't, doesn't, it's not timely, right? So it's going to be evergreen. Um, the Tesla stuff is much more timely. Uh, some of it's evergreen, but a lot more timely and a lot more now. And then the third piece of the content, I'm going to keep that under wraps, but something will come in the future as well. So that's all part of that plan that came out of those ayahuasca ceremonies. So I'll continue. To date, Stephen's 10-month-old Solving the Money Problem channel has over 16 million views and an estimated annual earnings of up to 172k from YouTube ad revenue alone. Hmm. You guys will have to wait for the, the 12-month income reveal to know if that's accurate or not. I believe that with Steven's Cybertruck video, he created a new category for not only himself, but for other aspiring creators to follow. Business-related Tesla content. Although channels such as HyperChange and Financial Education were already heavily exposed to this genre, the demand for this type of content exploded following Steven's success. Hmm, interesting. For channels unlike Financial Education that don't have a well-established subscriber base, creating content that does not relate to Tesla is risky as these videos may not experience the same level of exposure. It can take tens of hours to create even the simplest video, that is also true, and losing the recommendation of the algorithm can be disappointing. Unfortunately, this can lead creators to focus on what works best for the algorithm, even if it conflicts with their true passions. 
Uh, this is definitely a, a possibility and surely a likelihood for some people that are just chasing money. It's quite hilarious the origins of my channel as I mentioned earlier. I never thought I'd be monetized and I was doing it for fun. I mean I'm financially independent. I was retired. I was in Peru trying to figure out what do I do from here and starting the channel wasn't how do I earn money from here because I'd already solved that problem. It was what do I do, my purpose, my meaning, my mission right? as a guy, like what am I aiming at and that's where this channel came from. Um, so I started this as a passion thing, but certainly <laughs> the, the floodgates have potentially opened now. You can milk Tesla content if you're a new creator and it'll certainly be an effective way to try and get views on content. But the key here is that if your content sucks dick, like no one's going to keep watching it. So it's a poor strategy because it doesn't help your channel to teach the algorithm that people don't want to watch your content. They tune out quickly because it's boring or something like that. So um, yeah, it's never worth chasing money uh, on YouTube or in any form of business add value follow for me like i'm trying to to have a positive impact help people change their thinking a little bit to give some insight and just have one example of one guy's thinking on investing so it's like a i don't know like a somebody to have, play ping pong with and just think through my thinking does it make sense do you disagree and just to help people think deeper about their own positions on stocks and in particular the stocks that i'm invested in the investments the assets that i'm in you know all right they go on to mention a few prominent tesla related channels uh, meet kevin Recommended channel, financial education, Jeremy over there, solving the money problem, hyperchange, Tesla Daily, Kagan's Academy. I think it's Kaskin's Academy. I think they, yeah, I just was reading off the thing. I think that, anyway. Um, David Lee on investing, Tom Nash, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to read the quote they pulled too, just from uh, solving the money problem. Um, Tesla has won the decade. This is why I'm pouring every spare cent that I have into the company. Hmm. Yeah, that sums things up pretty accurately, dude. That, that was a well-picked quote. I mean, that, that sums everything up in just like two sentences perfect very concise nice nice selection of quote and i mean it was a pretty good quote too let's read the conclusion elon musk may be disappointed by how the press portrays him but he's managed to gain complete control over the world's image of him and his companies he makes strong connections with fans and retail investors meanwhile avoiding the press instead of spending any time with the press he spent over three hours on a podcast with his biggest fans and retail investors yep i mean that's just like a good human thing to do like elon wants to connect with the people that are supportive what like totally makes sense why would you waste your time with pe press are going to be typically not always i get it but like typically asking negative questions and all you know trying to get some exclusive juicy salacious scoop on the company a quote a soundbite something like that why would you do that when you can invest the time with people that are very supportive and behind you and want to know more about the mission and really connect as a person i mean come on that's just a man who knows his time's valuable and he doesn't waste it. Even last week, when interviewed by Kara Swisher, he threatened to end the podcast after his views on the pandemic were questioned. With typical retail investors, questions can be more exciting. VTOL jets, exclamation mark. But rarely are the questions tough or critical of the business. I mean, is anyone ever going to ask him about his promises on full self-driving and why he's been selling the feature since October of 2016? Uh, totally a fair point, though. Like, you're not going to have uh, a very supportive person who's talking to Elon Musk, ask dickhead questions. Oh yeah, I mean, it must be real, because you know, it's just a dick move, and that's why Elon doesn't hang out with people that uh, are prone to dick moves, because it's a waste of his time. I'm the same, like I don't surround myself with turds. If there's a turd in my swimming pool, I'm getting out of the water, and then I'm like getting it out of the pool, and it's a whole new, yeah, just get out. Anyway, let's carry on. With hundreds of creators earning money to create positive content for Tesla, it's no wonder why there are now millions of new fans and investors of the companies. Elon Musk isn't selling his shares anytime soon, and neither are many of the diehard fans that promote Tesla in his stock. In fact, many of them are buying more and adding to the dips. Mm-hmm, this guy's nailing it. Should Tesla manage to be included into the S&P 500, this could leave a significant portion of the float untouched indefinitely. Mm. This is a great point. I mean, I'm not selling shit for over a decade. Many people, I think, who are smart are in the same boat. I don't mean that as a dig at people that have a shorter time horizon, but I don't think it's very smart if you're investing in a company like this with with what I know to be holding up for a shorter period in that time. Um, uh, interesting thoughts. I'm not sure what could take down the stock at this point. Even Elon Musk has said the stock was expensive on multiple occasions. In May, he said the stock price was too high, or maybe suggesting a split. On Battery Day, he said their valuation is treated as if they're minting money, and they're not. And on Kara's podcast, he said the stock is expensive today, but probably worth more in five years. Until some company is able to legitimately question Tesla's technology, Waymo, Cruise on full self-driving, or product, Mark E, Lucid Air in production, question mark. Who knows what will happen? Until then, the fans will keep growing and their voices will get louder. So before you buy the stock or short it, 
Keep in mind that there is a considerable force carrying the stock. This is, of course, similar to how short sellers held back the stock just a few years ago. To end, let's have a look at some of the influences with sizable followings and their exposure to the stock. And then, okay, cool, we've got a quote there on the right from Vincent, Tasmanian, and Viv below, Vincent at 75% Tesla and 25% SpaceX. In terms of his investment portfolio, Viv is 100% Tesla and over the left there, my portfolio as well, 96.41% Tesla with the terms, don't try this at home. Ah, oh, well, there you go. Uh, I have to say that was a pretty great article. I'm impressed. Um, I mean, I'm not, I think I give a little bit too much credit. It's probably been given to me for starting this whole thing. Let's be real. But I, I understand where Sean's coming from here and yeah, some really great points too. And he's, he's right, the, the sort of closing thoughts there. If you are thinking of betting against Tesla stock, uh, in addition to all the bullish points about the company, their execution, the, the market conditions, like everything the fuck that's going, all, all of it, there is also that additional weight, and I'm actually going to make a video about this soon, why Tesla no longer has a press department. Um, there's enough voices now that are trying to share their thoughts and opinions and really coming from a place of honesty and truth and integrity and just trying to share what they see and they think not to try and manipulate the stock or, you know, because we know what goes on in the mainstream media, let's be honest. Okay, so yeah, I think that's a valid point. This was fun. Um, let me know what you guys thought about this on the Fly Reaction video too. I just thought, you know what, someone sent me this article. I might read it because it's very specific. The channel was mentioned. I thought, okay, why not? Why don't I record it for you as well? All right, see you guys in the next video. And don't forget your free stocks with Weeble and Stake using the links below. Deposit $100 in your Weeble account, you'll get a free stock valued up to $1,600. And Stake, spin the roulette wheel, you'll either get Nike, GoPro, or Dropbox. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private a discord server and more consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so i can keep creating content for you guys there's a link in the description you can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks to learn more click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store either way the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again